Intermediate Accounting 24 Pensions Part 1. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email phone number. We're on Facebook. And the text that I use as a source for these videos. Jumping over to Excel, I wanted to, first of all, define a risk that we're talking about with pension. A pension, is, to define it, is a commitment by a company, by agreement, to pay you a fixed amount of money in retirement. That's what a pension is. And so we have a risk. And the risk is there's not enough money available to pay the pension. And that risk is going to be borne or taken on by either the worker or the company, depending on what kind of plan is in place. Defined contribution, this is the type of plan where most companies are moving towards. The risk is with the employee. The company says, we will put money in the bucket on a particular schedule based on factors that we'll see in a minute. And how that bucket of money performs as far as investment returns and how much it pays out at the end, Mr. Worker, is completely up to you. You have, Mr. Worker, the risk that there won't be enough money in the bucket to pay the pension while you're alive. So I say here, risk is up to the employee, the investment performance, and the amount of any resulting benefit. If there's not enough assets, then the pension ends under defined contribution. Defined benefit is the older form where more, most companies are moving away from. Because under this form, the risk that I just explained up here is borne by the company. If there are not enough assets, then the company has an unfunded liability that must be paid. It's a liability to the company, it's on the balance sheet, and it has to be paid. The key here is we have to match the flow of the investment dollars with the time somebody retires, how long they'll retire, and what the amount of payment will be. So we're matching a liability, which is what we have to pay an employee, a worker, in the form of a pension, with the investments. How much do we put in the bucket? What does it earn? When do we start taking it out? So the factors are rate of return earned on the investment. When do funds need to be available? That's why I use the word match, because depending on how long an employee lives, it could be 5 years, 10 years, 15, 30 years, we don't know. The funds are going to be liquidated to pay a pension to the former worker. When do we stop paying? For most plans, it's when the former worker passes away, but it also could be a set amount of time, 10 years, 15 years. With defined contribution, where the risk is with the employee, if there are assets remaining at the employee's death, that can become part of the deceased employee's estate, and that can be passed on as an asset to an heir. Well, let's talk more about pension expense, because businesses have revenue and expenses. Companies are going to have a pension expense, and I want to think specifically about a defined benefit plan where the company carries liability for paying attention in the future. So we have five factors here, and the first one is called vesting, and I'll define it. Vesting is defined as pension benefits that a worker owns or has earned. And they earn it based on years of service, salary, and other factors. And the issue is, what percentage of workers will remain long enough to qualify for the benefit? We use GM and Chrysler as an example. Most auto workers stayed until they retired for a couple of reasons. First, they could make more money based on the generous union contracts at GM and Chrysler than they could doing um, that same type of manufacturing work in another company. And they also knew that the pension was very generous. Part of what led to the bailout of the auto companies in 08 and 09 was that the GM and Chrysler in particular had such huge <coughs> underfunded pensions, and we'll get to underfunding here. It'll become clearer as we go along. Another factor is salaries. How much will salaries rise before retirement? I'm in Missouri, and I know a lot of teachers, and the pension for Missouri State teachers is based 
partially on what was your salary in the last few years that you were working. So the name of the game is to try to get to a salary level that's the most attractive because that's what your pension will be based on. The issue is part of the pension calculations based on salary. Number three, how long will you live? What's your anticipated lifespan under retirement, after retirement? Or for the time period of the pension, maybe the pension has a set number of years, five years, ten years. The issue is we have to pay the pension during the worker's lifetime, and this brings up the use of actuaries, which are heavy, heavy math people. They pass a series of exams, and actuaries deal with probability. If we have a pool of people, what's the probability on how long the average person will live? Because that helps us determine under a defined benefit plan what our pension expense will be. So we mentioned before, number four, we'll have a rate of return earned on the investments. And finally, number five, discount rate. If we wanted to look at that future liability for the pension in today's dollars, we need a discount rate to take all those future benefits and discount them back to today. So we need to know in today's dollars how much money do we need in the bucket. Those are the five factors that deal with pension expense, which is a bigger issue under defined benefit plans where the company is liable. That's the end of Intermediate Accounting 24. We now have continuous classroom weekly live chats on critical accounting topics you'll find on the website. Here's our YouTube channel, which has a complete list of all of our videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions, here's our web address, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.